Hello and welcome to Chicory's Maintenance Series. This week we're working on the 12 kilowatt and what we have noticed is a little bit of oil weeping out of the main seal. And what the main seal is between the generator unit and the um, block of the engine where the crankshaft is, there's a main seal that seals the oil from leaking out. And we're getting some leakage and it's showing just a small amount. And usually what happens when you have a main seal leaking, it's one of two things. Either you have excess heat in the engine room that is causing the seal to get harder and brittle, and it isn't as supple, so it can't seal quite as well. The other thing could be excess um, crankcase pressure. So most likely what it is, is crankcase ventilation. So we're going to test that first, and I'm gonna explain a little bit about that. So. The engine has cylinders and there's a piston that goes up and down and there's uh, oil rings and compression rings that seal um, the explosion that happens when there's ignition. What happens though is as an engine ages, a little bit of that gas can sweep by the piston and it goes into the crankcase and it actually pressurizes the crankcase. There's a valve right here um, which is called a crankcase ventilator, commonly referred to as a PCV, positive crankcase ventilation. And this valve takes uh, the pressure from inside the engine once it gets to a certain level, then it feeds it into the intake manifold of the engine, and then it reburns any of those gases that are inside the crankcase. So what I'm going to do is kind of um, do a, a manual test of this positive crankcase ventilation unit. Uh, I have a manometer, but it is not on the boat right now, and that measures pressure, relative pressure. And I could test exactly how much pressure is on the crankcase. I believe that this valve is like one inch of mercury or something like that, um, and then it releases and then allows stuff to go into the intake manifold. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the oil cap which is apparently on very hard. Got to move this hose a little bit. And I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to start the engine with my hand here. And um, I'm going to feel how much pressure is in the crankcase because this filler, of course, has um, journals that go down into the crankcase because oil is pumped up into the valve assembly for the overhead uh, valve's head, it gets lubricated and then the oil drains down. So the pressure can come up through those um, oil journals. And so I'll be able to feel the pressure and I'm going to do it on a cold engine because I told you about the, the cylinders and the pistons. Well, the cylinders on this block are made out of cast iron and the pistons are aluminum. So when the engine first starts, there's larger tolerance between the two than when the engine gets hot. The manufacturer designs it so that when the piston expands, when it's hot, it's sealing the best. So I'm going to start this right now with my hand over this. It's gonna get a little noisy. And then I'm going to kind of feel exactly what's going on. And then depending on what I feel, I'll probably take that crankcase ventilation piece off. If there's excess of crankcase ventilation, it's not way out of line. Um, I didn't, I couldn't perceive anything. Um, we'll be going into a marina in um, about a week, and I can test this with the manometer. But for right now, I'm gonna take off these four screws and just inspect this um, valve, make sure that there's nothing funky that I can see, and I'll show you that in a second. But um, right now, it's not readily evident what's going on, and so I'm gonna investigate a little further. Okay, I'm back. I've taken the four screws out of the uh, ventilator, and I wanna show you how this works. So I take this off. Um, Tracy's gonna zoom in here. I'm gonna use my screwdriver. So you can see uh, a little wire mesh right here. So this wire mesh is separating this valve assembly from the uh, valve train that's in underneath this valve cover type area. This hole leads to 
the intake manifold. So what happens is underneath this um, rubber bellows, there's a little spring. You can see this popping back. So when this is in position, pressure builds up in this area. It pushes up the bellows, which opens up the passageway between the crankcase and the intake manifold and the natural vacuum that's in the intake manifold sucks those gases in. Now, what I'm uh, planning on doing here just for an experiment because I do have this um, rear main seal leak is um, James Hamilton on MV Duronia uh, made a tip about removing this assembly, including this rubber bellows and the spring, making your own gasket for this area and screwing it back on. What happens then is this intake manifold is exposed to the crankcase all the time, and you end up having a net negative pressure inside the crankcase, which he said stopped all of the oil flow from um, his rear main seal, and it worked great. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I want to do that right now just to stop the oil leak, and I'm going to continue um, testing and understanding. But like I said, I don't have the manometer on the boat right now. Once I have it on the meet on the boat, and I can kind of test this stuff, I can do a much better job of diagnosis. But for the meantime, um, this is just a nice, easy thing that I can do to ensure that I don't have that oil leak. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, so I have the valve. We took it apart. And you can see this is the little spring that pushes on the bellows. Here are the bellows. And I showed you sort of in this in action. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this. Remove this. Because the rubber bellows uh, was integral to making the gasket here, I need to make a new gasket. Uh, one of the things I keep on chicory is three different kinds of gasket materials. I have um, a paper type, a more oil resistant, and a cork. And I'm gonna show you how to make um, gaskets with this material, but I do use a couple tools. And these are just cheap ones from uh, Harbor Freight. But one of the things that I'm gonna do is I need to make holes for um, the screw holes. And so these are little punches that allow me to punch through the material and make a hole. And so I just line up the one that I like and I start the process by drawing on the gasket material. I'm going to draw the holes. I'm going to go around So now I have a pattern, and I can see that this is about, um, you know, let's say a quarter inch. And so I can basically just hand draw. This really isn't going to get in the way of anything. So I'm just going to say that that is going to make a good gasket. And I'll be back in a second and show you how to cut this out, but I don't have a knife and a hammer right now, so I'm gonna go grab those. Okay, so you saw that I had the pattern. I grabbed the knife, I grabbed the uh, hammer. I think what I'm gonna do first is uh, punch out the holes. So I saw this tool. So what I'm gonna do is you can see the individual little um, pen marks I made here. So I'm going to center this as best I can over, and then just to tap. And you can see it made a nice hole there. I'm just going to do the same thing here. So I just have a little pick here. I'm just going to show you. So I, for cleaning it, it's super easy. You can just go down the little shaft here and poke out the little slugs. So now that I have the holes, the next thing I'm going to do is cut the inside 
And I have some clean uh, new blades here, but it looks like this one's in pretty decent shape. And so I'm just going to follow my line. That looks like that's okay. Now I'm gonna go around the outside and I'm going to do a quick big arc to begin with and I'll fine tune it a little bit better once I don't have to handle the whole big sheet. I have to handle all that. Now I can just come in here and do a little bit of the fine detail stuff. Okay, so now I can test it. And I would say that that is a pretty damn nice looking gasket. So now we're gonna install it and I'll show you what it looks like. I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I'm back uh, with the 12. You can see that this lines up with the screw holes very nicely. I'm going to Look at this and it appears as if it is omnidirectional, so it doesn't really matter which way I put it on. And I'm just gonna line up the screw holes. For right now, I'm just gonna hand tighten these in. And that's what it looks like. So I'm gonna start this and I'm going to monitor it. I don't have to show you starting it because I don't expect to see anything right away. I couldn't really feel any pressure with my hand here, so I don't expect any difference there as well. So I'm just gonna monitor how much we have of a leak or if the leak disappears. But in the meantime, I'm gonna say that this video is done and thank you for watching, viewing, subscribing, and liking. Until next week, thanks for hanging in.